Hey there, my fellow Fallout 4 players. Today, I'm going to deconstruct the ultimate epic stealth build for you guys from levels 1 through 25. My character is currently 25th level in my walkthroughs. When I get to level 50, I'll probably do a part 2 to show you the perk selection for levels 26 through 50. But today's video is going to show you how to get well on your way to becoming the ultimate stealth assassin character in Fallout 4. I'll talk a bit about equipment and strategies near the end of the video and then show you some clips of the build in action. But let's start right from the beginning with the uh, stat selection array. Okay, so as you can see here, I have selected 6522256. Oh, <laughs> I just realized that's like a palindrome. So uh, anyway, um, I didn't want to dump strength because your carrying capacity is based on strength and being able to carry stuff to vendors in an easy fashion will help make things affordable since we're dumping charisma. Perception I set to 5, knowing I'd get the uh, perception bobblehead in Concord. Having a 6 perception is, for most of your levels, a decent balance, especially when it's easy to augment it further with uh, eyewear and various hats. I'd only start increasing perception way later when I wanted to look into the penetrator perk. I dumped endurance since we won't be doing a lot of sprinting with this build and we wouldn't even be getting hit that much if you use your stealth ability strategically. I dumped charisma intelligence too since the XP can be made up for by taking the idiot savant perk and your trading prowess can be boosted with various chems and uh, charisma boosting garb. I set agility at 5 knowing I'd use the special book and sanctuary to boost that by one more. I'd have to boost it again before I could take the ninja perk, but I wanted this to be at a decent level from the start since agility determines your action point reserve. I also thought it was worth bringing luck to 6. I can't say with absolute certainty, but I seem to find vastly more useful legendary items during my replay after the glitch when my luck was higher than my first build. Plus, luck factors into crits as well as how often the idiot savant perk kicks in. It also factors into other things that all around make the game a bit more fun. Okay. Let's go into the perk chart now. Okay, well you get your first perk at second level, and I chose Fortune Finder. If you dump Charisma with this build in order to boost agility, luck, and perception, you'll need a way to compensate your uh, purchasing power. There are a few feeds best taken early on, and this is one of them in my opinion. At third level, I took Idiot Savant. As with taking Fortune Finder, if you're dumping Charisma, Idiot Savant will make up for dumping Intelligence. And, also like Fortune Finder, this is best taken early on to uh, maximize the potential over many levels. Okay, at 4th level I took my first rank in Sneak. Not only is this perk the central focus of the build, but it'll also help you survive a bit better early on. At 5th level I took another rank in Fortune Finder. My last rank in it actually, but it was well worth it over the course of the character's career. You'll hear me uh, tout the perk in my previous walkthroughs as one of the main reasons I could afford some of the cool equipment I was able to purchase. It actually does make a difference. Like me, if you don't want to use any glitches or exploits to make money, then this is well worth it. In order to qualify for Ninja, I needed to bump my agility up from 6 to 7, so I put my 6th level perk into agility, so we can now take Ninja next level. And at 7th level, I took my first rank in Ninja. Since one of the purposes of sneaking is to be able to do sneak attacks, this perk chain is a must for the build. At 8th level, I took another rank in sneak. Uh, you can qualify for the second rank at 5th level, but I think getting Fortune Finder as early as possible is worth it. Then being able to do better sneak attacks is worth taking it before another rank in sneak. At 9th level, I went ahead and took a rank in the Gunslinger perk. Uh, being able to do slightly more damage with pistols early on is also worth it, especially since I'd be getting my hands on the Deliverer very soon. At 10th level, I had my hands on the Deliverer, since I did the early railroad missions as soon as I could. So I went ahead and took rank in the Mr. Sandman perk. Not taking ranks in the uh, Gun Nut perk means the Deliverer was my first silenced weapon. And at 11th level, I went ahead and took another rank in Idiot Savant. Like Fortune Finder, it would be my last rank in the perk, but it was worth it to take it as soon as it becomes available. At 12th level, you can qualify for another rank in Sneak. Uh, this rank is particularly useful because you can now no longer trigger enemy mines. You can just walk right up to them and disarm them and take them for yourself, which totally rocks. At 13th, I went ahead and took a rank in the Action Boy perk. It would uh, be my only rank in it since I'd later get my hands on the Grim Reaper Sprint perk, but I thought it was worthwhile to take early on, especially since it also helps with running while uh, having a low endurance. 
At 14th, I went ahead and took a second rank in the Gunslinger perk. Uh, Non-automatic pistols now do 40% more damage, and the range is increased. At 15th level, I went ahead and took a rank in the Rifleman perk too. This is optional if you think you might want to go down the sniper rifle path. However, I soon discovered that the Gunslinger perk actually makes some pistols shoot farther than stock rifles. So this is probably one I could have waited on until I got my hands on a suppressed Overseer's Guardian, which I talk about in one of my videos. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out that video. At 16th level, you can qualify for another rank in uh, Ninja, which I definitely took. Sneak attacks will start making a real difference now, with uh, many enemies downed in one shot. And at 17th level, I took another rank in uh, Mr. Sandman. That means our sneak attacks will do 30% more damage if done with a silenced weapon. All my weapons are now silenced at this level by simply pulling the silencers off other guns I find and putting them on my own. No need for the gun nut perk at all, actually. At 18th, I went ahead and took another rank in Gunslinger since uh, you won't qualify for it again until 27th. Pistol damage is now doing 60% more and the range is further increased. For my 19th level perk, I added a point to luck so we could then get the luck bobblehead and qualify for the Grim Reaper sprint perk, which is really cool if you use vats a lot, which I do. For my 20th level perk, I went ahead and took a rank in Bloody Mess. This bonus to damage is to all weapons and it ended up being not that hard to loot the bodies after they splatter. So after getting the luck bobblehead and qualifying for Grim Reaper sprint, I spent my 21st and 22nd level perks on two ranks of the Grim Reaper Sprint. Won't be able to take that again until 46th level. For my 23rd perk, I took another rank in Sneak. You're not just 50% harder to detect now, but you can move along at your regular pace without contributing to enemy detection levels. This uh, really helps. Can't take Sneak again until 38th though. For my 24th level perk, I went ahead and took another rank in Bloody Mess. Uh, a plus 10 to damage really helps, and uh, you can't take it again until 31st level. The next major perk I want to take is the Penetrator perk. Being able to shoot enemies through cover would be amazing. However, I only had a 6 perception after already getting the perception bobblehead in Concord. So the next three perks I'll spend on perception, including the last one for this video, which I spent at 25th level, bumping up perception from six to seven. So there you go, the perfect array of perks to take for levels one through 25 to reach the ultimate stealth build, in, in my humble opinion. Now, this is just if you wanna fully maximize your combat capabilities. It doesn't take into account two other factors, inconvenience and impatience. <laughs> Let me explain. I was able to make up for having a low charisma during speech checks and while trading by switching over to uh, charisma boosting clothing and popping some of those great mentats, which you can craft without any of the chemistry perks. However, those are definitely extra steps that you have to take every time you want to pass a persuasion check or buy major items. Not everyone is going to want to go through that inconvenience, which leads to the impatience factor. Some players might not want to wait around until they find a gun or armor mods on enemies or from vendors. I like the Fallout 4 perk system. Not everyone does. I, I know, but I like it a lot though, and I think a lot of thought went into it. They give players a way to work around any weaknesses in the game if you have enough patience and ingenuity. I really like that element of the game, but they also provide you with what I call convenience perks to make up for time if, you know, you're the impatient type. Perks like Van, Strong Back, or any of the crafting perks are examples of ways to speed up your gameplay and make things, you know, all around more convenient. It's very cool that they can cater to the impatient player so they don't get bored with the minutia while giving the more patient strategic players various workarounds. Just wanted to throw that out there in case some people might have a strong case for other perks that I didn't take. You know, you probably noticed I didn't take uh, the locksmith perk. You know, some people might not want to recruit Kate as a companion to do the lock picking for you and just want to take the lock picking perk themselves. That's perfectly fine. That was easy. How about a challenge next time? You tuned into this video to basically hear one person's take on the epic stealth build. There are many paths to achievement and that's the beauty of Fallout 4. Okay, so let's talk about some of the equipment you want to try and acquire along the way. Alright, well if you're lucky you'll get your hands on some chameleon armor. It's dropped randomly by legendary enemies, so there's no guide for that. It'll eventually happen for you though, it just, you know, it takes some time. In the meantime, you can certainly add muffling or shadowing to your current armor, which uh, doesn't require any armor or perks. Stay light on the armor though to keep your stealth factor high. I went with leather all the way until after 20th when I found some chameleon metal combat armor and that's when I switched. You can go through the early railroad missions to get your hands on the Deliverer, the ultimate early stealth weapon. I was able to even mod it out further without having uh, the gun nut perk. And I was able to pick that up by 10th level by doing those missions right after Diamond City in my replay. 
I made videos about those if you want to check them out, episodes 8 through 11 in my trivia walkthroughs. Check out those links in the description. Look out for suppressors on other guns sold by vendors. You don't need to invest in any crafting perks if you're willing to take the time to mix and match the mods themselves. If you guys want me to make a video on how to totally mod out your gear without any crafting perks, let me know in the description below. I was able to scrap together a pretty hefty surrogate sniper rifle for myself, which I named the Shadow Shot. All those mods there, I basically pulled off of other guns and added them to this gun. So it ended up being kind of a Frankenstein gun that's uh, not even really a sniper rifle, but it's actually better than a sniper rifle because of the gunslinger perk. You can see the range down there, 278, that's crazy. You can also craft a lot of food and chems to boost your gameplay as well. The chem I use most often is the Great Mentats. It boosts your charisma by five, which is not only useful for buying and selling, but also for passing speech checks as well. Combined with uh, various charisma boosting clothing, it totally makes up for having a low charisma. As soon as it's safe, I'm getting the hell out of here. So if you need anything else, better ask soon. Okay. Well, let's ask him since we got those uh, Mentats going. Hey, Ricky. You need something else? Oh. Nice. We're gonna pass all these. All right, well, let's get some supplies first. You scavenge anything that can help us? We're risking our lives out there. Oh, hell. I suppose I could spare a few things. The food item I use most often is the squirrel stew. The plus two to XP is nothing to shake a stick at. Combined with being well rested from sleeping in your own bed and the idiot savant perk, you'll actually level up very quickly and it totally makes up for having a low intelligence, which is what experience points are normally based on. There are a few other things that will help boost your stealth capabilities. I picked up my first covert operations manual during the tradecraft mission. I then collected about four more in between episodes. You know, the ones that didn't have quests associated with them. The ones that have quests associated with them I'll cover in my upcoming trivia walkthroughs, so stay tuned for those. Hey. This better be worth it. <laughs> Lastly, if you want a companion that won't blow your cover, pick Kate. <laughs> Sounds like an Eagles song. Anyway, I talk about her merits at length in episode 10 of my Fallout 4 playthrough. The part one of the Tradecraft mission, in fact. No need to repeat all that when you can just watch that episode, but in my opinion, she's the best companion for a stealth build. Give her a wicked suppressed sniper rifle and you're all set. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's my version of the epic stealth build levels 1 through 25. If and when I reach 50th level, I'll do a part 2 of this video, but to be honest, levels 1 through 25 really make up the crux of this stealth character. After that, it just starts becoming all gravy, you know? Like I might just start taking some pickpocketing so I can, you know, reverse uh, pickpocket grenades for the fun of it into enemies' pockets. But uh, yeah, this uh, video is really the concentration of what you want to focus on if you want to build the ultimate stealth character. And just to end the episode with a little action, I'll show you guys an awesome stealth kill shot montage montage from my previous episodes. Thanks again for watching. If this helped you guys, assassinate that like button and share the video around. And we'll see you next time on The Schooled Zone. Peace out. Wow. Okay. Well, let's, let's go ahead and take out his legs. but an arm? Awesome. Yeah, why not? Goodness gracious. <laughs> Man, love having that uh, high agility. Teamwork. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. Nice. Oh, and it, uh, the Grim Reaper sprint kicked in too. That rocks. Ooh. 
You know what? I'm switching weapons. There we go. See what a difference that makes. Did it again. God, I love it. Oh, we can see another turret all the way down there. I'm glad I came up here, actually. <laughs> One shot. Oh, I see another turret behind them. I bet I can reach it. Fantastic. Oh, and there's a raider. Yep, let's go for it. Why not? <laughs> okay, we'll just take them all out from up here. This is how you do a stealth play. <laughs>